Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome back to Coffee Break French. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be looking again at the immediate future tense. That's the tense that uses aller plus the infinitive. And we're also going to be covering a concept called the partitive article. And that's when you want to say some, for example, some coffee, some cheese, some music. So we'll be learning all about this in this episode. And I hope you enjoy episode 52 of Coffee Break French. So last time we were talking about the immediate future tense, which is used to talk about what's going to happen. I'm going to eat in a restaurant this evening. They're going to listen to some music. We are going to learn some French. Now today we're going to be looking at the negative of these kind of statements. So using the immediate future tense in the negative. However, before we do that, let's practice the immediate future in a few more sentences. So, Anna. Some sentences for you to translate. And in each of these examples, we're going to take the opportunity to look at something that's a little tricky in French, but something that we've come across many times before. And that's what's called the partitive article. It's really how you translate some in French. So, for example, some coffee would be du café. Du café. Uh, some French would be du français. Du français. Okay, so when it's masculine, some is du. When it's feminine, some is de la. Last week we had écouter de la musique. De la musique. De la musique. Some music. And if it were ice cream, it would be de la glace. De la glace. So the partitive article translating some is du in the masculine. De la, in the feminine, and if it begins with a vowel, is de plus l apostrophe. So, for example, some water, de l'eau. De l'eau. Or even some architecture, de l'architecture. De l'architecture. So, remember those ones as we come to practice this using some immediate future tenses. Let's begin with today... We are going to learn some French. Aujourd'hui, nous allons apprendre français. Okay, so that would be today we're going to learn French. What about some French using the partitive article? Oh, of course, that's just what we've been learning. <laughs> Absolutely. So today we're going to learn some French. Aujourd'hui, nous allons apprendre du français. Aujourd'hui, nous allons apprendre du français. Okay. What about uh, today? I am going to drink some coffee. Aujourd'hui, je vais boire du café. Très bien. Aujourd'hui, je vais boire du café. Okay. What about this one? This evening. They are going to listen to some music. Ce soir, ils vont écouter de la musique. Ce soir, ils vont écouter de la musique. Uh -huh. And then if we're going to use another example, this time using some food. Um, are you going to eat some ice cream tomorrow? Est-ce que tu vas manger de la glace demain? Très bien. Est-ce que tu vas manger de la glace demain? And can you try that one using the vous form, please? Est-ce que vous allez manger de la glace demain? Excellent. Est-ce que vous allez manger de la glace demain? And let's do the L, the L apostrophe ones. So, how would you say... I am going to drink some water. Je vais boire de l'eau. Je vais boire de l'eau. Très bien. I'm going to drink some water. And finally, how would you say? She is going to look at some French architecture. Elle 
Elle va regarder de l'architecture française. Française, in fact, because architecture is feminine. Elle va regarder de l'architecture française. Elle va regarder de l'architecture française. Okay, so, from the point of view of your immediate future tenses, excellent. From the point of view of the partitive article, excellent aussi. Now, the partitive article is something that learners tend to find a little complicated, especially because it is often not translated at all in English. For example, so far, we've been looking at using some to translate du café, de l'architecture, uh, de la musique, and so on. But very often, in English, there's no word for some at all. So, for example, I am going to listen to music. Je vais écouter de la musique. You still have to translate de la musique, because in French it's the partitive article. But in English, you can drop the sum completely. I'm going to listen to music. Je vais écouter de la musique. Or, another example, um, are you going to eat some chocolate? Est-ce que tu vas manger du chocolat? But we could equally say in English, are you going to eat chocolate? Est-ce que tu vas manger du chocolat? Again, dropping the sum in English, but still keeping the du in French. And notice the difference between Est-ce que tu vas manger du chocolat? Are you going to eat some chocolate? And Est-ce que tu vas manger le chocolat? Are you going to eat the chocolate that I gave you earlier? Or that you've just bought? So specific chocolate that we're talking about. Whereas if it's just some chocolate or just chocolate, then it's the partitive article, du chocolat. Alors, Anna, c'est clair? Oui, je comprends. Très bien. OK. Maintenant, nous allons parler des négatifs. All right, so now we're going to talk about negatives. Yes, we are indeed. We're going to talk about the negative of the immediate future tense. Now, let's think a little bit about how we talk about negatives in general in French. How do you say, for example, let's think, I don't speak French. Je ne parle pas français. Je ne parle pas français. What about I don't understand? Je ne comprends pas. Très bien. So in French, how do you form the negative of a normal verb? You put the ne and the pas around the conjugated verb. Absolutely. The ne and the pa are your two slices of bread and your verb is the filling of the sandwich. Okay, so you've got ne, verb, pa. Je ne comprends pas. Je ne parle pas. And so on. Okay, that's straightforward enough. Now let's think about I am not going to the market. Je ne vais pas au marché. Je ne vais pas au marché. So how do you say I'm not going? Je ne vais pas. Okay. How do you say I am not going to sing? Je ne vais pas chanter. I'm not going to eat. Je ne vais pas manger. I'm not going to dance. Je ne vais pas danser. I'm not going to understand. Je ne vais pas comprendre. Okay, so how do you form a negative of the immediate future tense? So you put the ne and the pa around the conjugated verb and then comes the infinitive. Exactly. So just to repeat that, you put the ne and the pa around the conjugated verb, which in this case is aller, the part of aller, Je ne vais pas, tu ne vas pas, il ne va pas, elle ne va pas, nous n'allons pas, vous n'allez pas, ils ne vont pas, elles ne vont pas. So the ne pas goes round the part of aller, the conjugated verb here, and then comes the infinitive. The infinitive of whichever verb you need to use in a particular sentence. Now, the reason we're reinforcing this is because lots of learners think the ne pas goes round the verb. Oh, the infinitive's another verb. I'll just put the pas after the infinitive. But that's wrong, 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 wrong. Don't do that. It's 
the n and the para and the conjugated verb, and then comes the infinitive. And this idea is going to be really crucial to you as we move ahead with further lessons of Coffee Break French because it comes up lots of times, particularly in the next few lessons as we're going to be looking at a different tense. But I'm not going to say any more about that just now. I'm going to give you, Anna, some examples to test you on this. I'd like you to say, I am not going to eat in the restaurant this evening. Je ne vais pas manger au restaurant ce soir. Je ne vais pas manger au restaurant ce soir. Très bien. What about, she is not going to sing the song. Elle ne va pas chanter la chanson. Très bien. Elle ne va pas chanter la chanson. Elle ne va pas chanter la chanson. Okay, what about we are not going to visit Paris this year? Now, I'll give you this year because it's a little tricky. Cette année, cette année. Nous n'allons pas visiter Paris cette année. Excellent. Nous n'allons pas visiter Paris cette année. Now, in this case, the ne becomes an apostrophe because it's followed by a vowel. Nous n'allons pas visiter Paris cette année. Now, cette année, cette is spelled C-E-T-T-E. It means this for a feminine noun. Cette année. We've already had this evening. Ce soir. So this, for a masculine noun, le soir, is ce, C-E. Ce. Ce. Ce soir. Ce soir. Cette année. Cette année. This morning would be ce matin. Ce matin. Now, I don't really want to get into s and set and say at the moment. We will cover that in a future lesson. But just for the time being, remember this year is cette année. Cette année. And this evening is ce soir. Ce soir. So set for feminine and s for masculine. Okay? So, one more time. We are not going to visit Paris this year. Nous n'allons pas visiter Paris cette année. Très bien. Alors, maintenant, tu ne vas pas faire de faute. Now, you're not going to make mistakes with this, Anna. Now, you'll maybe notice that I've done something different there. I've said, tu ne vas pas faire de faute. In the negative, the du, de la, and de, plus l apostrophe, become de and the apostrophe. It's a little bit complicated. We won't go into it too much just now. But just know that tu ne vas pas faire de faute or vous n'allez pas faire de faute means you're not going to make any mistakes. There's actually another way of saying this which is perhaps easier. You can use the verb se tromper. Se tromper. Now watch that one. Especially watch your pronunciation of it. I'll explain why in a moment. Se tromper. Se tromper. Now your mouth should be really far forward when you say tromper. Trompé. Trompé. Se tromper. Se tromper. Now, if it's se tromper, you know what kind of infinitive is it or what kind of verb is it? It's a reflexive verb. Yeah. So, literally, is to mistake yourself, if you like. To make a mistake. Se tromper. Se tromper. Anna, can you work out how you would say, I am not going to make a mistake using se tromper. Je ne vais pas me tromper. Excellent. You've remembered to change the se tromper to a me tromper because you're looking at a reflexive infinitive, but you're talking about yourself. So, je ne vais pas, I am not going, to make a mistake. Me tromper. Je ne vais pas me tromper. Je ne vais pas me tromper. Now, 
Earlier, I said that you need to make sure that you're pronouncing tromper well, tromper. And the reason for that is because there's another verb in French, and that's tromper. Tromper. Now, tromper means to soak, or se tromper means to soak yourself or to get wet. Not to wet yourself, that's something different. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, to soak yourself or to get soaked, se tromper. Se tromper. But to make a mistake, se tromper. Se tromper. Okay, so lips forward, se tromper, to make a mistake. Think of yourself going, oh, I've made a mistake. Se tromper. Se tromper. And se tromper, with mouth wide open, se tromper. Se tromper. To get soaked or to get wet. So, Anna, how would you say, I'm not going to make a mistake this evening? Je ne vais pas me tromper ce soir. Très bien, je ne vais pas me tromper ce soir. How would you say, I'm not going to get soaked this evening? Je ne vais pas me tromper ce soir. Je ne vais pas me tromper ce soir. Très bien. So let's just think about what we've covered in this lesson. First of all, we've looked at the negative of the immediate future tense. The negative is formed, as you know, by putting ne and pas round the conjugated verb. So in the present tense, je ne comprends pas. Now, comprend is actually quite a good word for practicing those two nasal sounds of tromper and tromper. Comprend. 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 Okay, so con, c o m, prend, p r e n d s. Comprend. Comprend. Tromper, t r o m p e r. Tromper. Tromper, t r e m p e r. Tromper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, getting back to <laughs> comprend, je ne comprends pas. So, ne pas, round the conjugated verb, je ne comprends pas. Je ne comprends pas. And when that becomes the immediate future, it still goes round the conjugated verb. Je ne vais pas comprendre. Je ne vais pas comprendre. So, I am not going to understand in that situation. Je ne vais pas comprendre. Je ne vais pas comprendre. Okay, so that's fine for the negative of the immediate future tense. Now, the other thing that we've looked at today was the partitive article. Now, this is normally how you would translate some in English. Some food, some music, some coffee, and so on. Now, when it's masculine, the word that we use is... Du. So, du chocolat, du café... Du français, and so on. For feminine words, what would we use? De la. De la. De la nourriture, some food. De la musique, some music, and so on. And when it begins with a vowel, then it's de plus l apostrophe. For example, de l'architecture. De l'eau, and so on. So that's the second thing we've covered. The partitive article. And then there was one other thing that we mentioned, and that was the use of the word this in French, because it's translated differently depending on whether the noun it's describing is masculine or feminine. So, this evening was... Ce soir. Ce soir. And this year was... Cette année. Cette année. So, cette, C-E-T-T-E, and ce, C-E, two different versions of the word for this. That's where we're going to leave it today. And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break French. Thanks for joining us and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break French community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakfrench and we're at Learn French on Twitter. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.
This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.